Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Engineering Dynamics. In this video, we will be talking about this exercise where we want to get the equations of motion of a pendulum with variable length. We will first do it with the principle of virtual work and then with the Lagrange II formalism. Let's jump right in. So we have this beautiful pendulum, but the important part is that our length of the pendulum is dependent on time. So now we have to, first of all, do that, uh, get the equations, uh, equation, one equation of motion uh, with the principle of virtual work and then with Lagrange. So the first thing we do when we want to find the equations of motion, we first of all have to find the degrees of freedom. So we know that it's one mass, so two times n, n is one, we have two minus one constraint, we have one left, so we have only one degree of freedom. So in our case, it's just alpha. The principle of virtual work is very easy. We have n times u double dot minus the forces that are acting on our system times our virtual displacements. So first of all, we have to get the position of our point. So we have this as the cosine and we have u2 or let's do it another way. We have this as the sine. So we do a derivation once, then we do a second derivation in time to get the acceleration. We do the same thing for position two. We have the first derivation and then the second. So the forces that are acting on our body in this case is the same as in a simple pendulum. We just have the force of gravity. So what we are left with is to find the virtual displacements. And the virtual displacements are defined as u du dq. So we have to derive our positions with our q's. And our q's in our case, or our q, singular, is just alpha. So we have to derive position one, this one, with alpha and position two with alpha. And then we have to do just a simple uh, transposition and a scalar multiplication to get the equation of motion that does not look like the uh, equation of motion for a simple pendulum because now we have to consider the change of L. So that's where we have this addition. So it is very easy in simple cases, but as soon as it gets complicated, we have to apply the Lagrange formalism. And that's what we are going to do here. So first of all, we have to get the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is one and a half times the mass times V. So velocity to the power of two. We have R1 squared. It's the same as R1 transpose times R1 dot. So we get, again, the position of our mass and do a simple time derivation. Then we do a then we do r1 dot transposed r1 and we got this expression and that's how we get the kinetic energy. As soon as we have the kinetic energy, we have to get the potential energy. The potential energy is minus m times r1 in this case, but we only have one, so it's r. Uh, r transposed times g, so we have this expression and this is our uh, velocity, uh, not velocity, but potential. We have zero forces that are acting on our system. Gravity is a force that can be transpo uh, transformed into the potential. So we have zero non-conservative forces. That would be the projection into the space of generalized coordinates, but we have zero. So we have zero non-conservative forces. And now we just have to do the same thing as we did multiple times before. We have a partial derivation and a total time derivative. Then again, a partial derivation plus the par partial derivative of the potential with our Q's. In our case, Q is just Q is alpha and it's zero. So this is our equation. Now we just have to enter the potential energy and the uh, kinetic energy. I've done this right here. And what we get from that, of course, we have to do the time derivative. We get the same equation that we had before. 
but now we can just cancel out one L here, one L here, and one L there. And of course, the mass is also in every term. So we set it to zero or just eliminate it. And we get the same equation of motion for the principle of virtual work that we had right here. And these two are equal. So it's the same for the Lagrange. I hope you see that applying the Lagrange is sometimes easier to get the equations of motion, especially when you know how the kinetic energy is uh, described because the kinetic energy, to get the kinetic energy is the most tedious thing to get the vector and then derive it once and getting the energy. So I hope this video gave you a small introduction into the topic of the principle of virtual work of a pendulum with variable length and of course the Lagrange formalism. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next time.